Hey, Snow Track Super Tracks YouTubers, it's time for another insightful and highly enlightening walk around. Just want to uh, bring you into the uh, whole spirit of the season here. We set a uh, record for the cold weather last night. It was minus 23 Celsius here at uh, our top secret world headquarters. And uh, right now it's about uh, minus 11, so uh, Celsius. So that's pretty cold. Remember that minus 18 Celsius is zero Fahrenheit. So it's a chilly one, but hey, we're up for it. And we want to tell you all about Drum roll, please. The Polaris Matrix VR1, Indy VR1. And this is an 850. This is a 137. And uh, this is, of course, uh, this chassis and this platform was new last year. And uh, there's a lot of new stuff about it to talk about. So I want to jump right in and give you as best uh, description and explanation for as much as I possibly can in the confines of uh, of these sort of impromptu walk-arounds. So here it is. <clears throat> this is the Matrix chassis. This is nothing like an Access. The Access platform uh, is completely different from this, and particularly in the ergonomic department. And that's what I want to talk to you about first. <clears throat> this has a four inch, over four inch narrower console in the gas tank area. And in the seat area, it is three inches narrower. Okay, so, you know, th those are all great numbers, great to quote. What does that mean? Okay, this is what it means. It means when you're standing on this thing, this thing feels a lot like a motorcycle. And I know that, you know, we've said that since the 03 Rev arrived, it feels very motorcyclish. Polaris is really pushing the ball uh, higher and higher up the hill by making this so narrow in the console and in the seat. And you can really appreciate that narrowness when you're running it fast through whoops and gnarly terrain. You can also appreciate it when you're sitting down. And that's really uh, where I like it the most, is my knees don't stick out in the wind. Like, look at the way I'm sitting on here. I'm behind this, this piece of trim right here. <clears throat> and that leads me to my next comment, and that is the uh, body work on this has been uh, aerodynamically designed, oh, sounds, sounds like a big word, I think it's three syllables. Um, it is aerodynamically designed to keep you warmer than an axis and less buffeting than an axis, including the hands, the, hand, the end, handlebar ends, and the rest of your body is better protected from wind. Now let's back up a bit and get back to ergos that are for performance oriented or for better performance oriented uh, uh, action, and that would be the Polaris ubiquitous flat top seat. Okay, a lot of people are saying, what, what, what's that all about? Why, why, what's a flat top seat? Why is it any different? Polaris started it on the Axis, and now uh, Skidoo has come to the party and they have flat top seats, and we think that probably they're gonna migrate into just about everybody's product because it works better with a flat top, and here's why. When you're going around a corner and you're sitting down and you have a round top seat, you tend to fall off the seat and not move as much of your body and as a lever against the chassis because the seat is round. So you're just kind of pushing on the side of the seat. With the flat top, when you push on the outside edge, on either the, the right or the left outside edge of the seat, you can actually use your weight to help lever and balance the chassis through a corner. Now I know that's very sophisticated talk, <clears throat> maybe confusing. Don't worry, it'll, it'll come home. The first time you ride one of these, you'll figure it out. But it does make a difference, and that's why uh, it's worth copying. It's worth everybody doing flat top seats. Okay, <clears throat> so that sort of covers the er ergonomics from a style and bodywork perspective. The most outstanding feature of this sled, before we get into mechanical parts, is the new Smart Grips, the thing that Polaris has brought to the market last year on the Matrix, where you can, with the 7S display, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute, you can actually set the individual temperatures of the thumb heater and the grips, and you can store them so that you always get what you want. So you're not, when you're taking off, you're not starting from zero or reset or where your brother-in-law left it the last time he used it. You can, you can store in, uh, in the switch cluster here with this button you can store in the uh, the heat settings that you want and it really works great because it keeps the uh, it monitors the heat so you know a lot of hot grips you turn them on high and they roast your fingers and you burn your skin off 
these, when you set them, they go to the preset Fahrenheit or Celsius temperature that you preset on the 7S. The thumb can be different than the, hand, the, the handle grips. It's, it's really an ergonomic improvement. It's a, it's a great idea and uh, it's kind of uh, the kind of thing that we should be expecting in this day and age of high technology with uh, everything that we do. Okay, um, something else while we're on this switch cluster I'll talk about from a mechanical standpoint is the brake. Um, probably many, many of our followers know that we consistently pick the Polaris hydraulic disc brake as the best operating brake in the industry uh, on any model snowmobile. And why do we do that? Because it's true. Um, and the reason it's true is because this is the last jack shaft brake in the business. Um, the Skidoo's uh, all use, the G4's all use a drive axle brake and the Arctic Cats and the Yamahas are using drive axle brakes. Inherently, there's, there's uh, nothing wrong, nothing dangerous, nothing sinister about a drive axle brake. What is different about it is, is it requires more uh, leverage pressure, it requires more pressure right here and you get less feel. The reason being is, is that the jack shaft is spinning arguably two or two and a half times as fast as the drive axle. So when you engage the brakes, you've got a wider range of modulation because that, that rotor is spinning so fast. When it's a drive axle brake, it's spinning as fast as the sled is rolling along the ground. Arguably the back tires and the, and the front drivers are spinning about the same RPM. There'd be a variance, of course, but uh, the slower you go, the less feel as you slow down, the less feel the brake has. If you're going really fast, a drive axle brake feels okay. But when you're in tight, twisty trails, you just can't beat the way the, uh, the drive axle, uh, sorry, the jack shaft brake on a Polaris works. And I'm glad that they, uh, that they haven't changed it. Now, what's the argument for a drive axle brake? Well, uh, right away, people would say, and engineers would say, yeah, but if your chain breaks, you still got brakes with a, uh, a drive axle mounted uh, caliper. True, yeah, I'll give you that. In my experience of wrecking stuff, which is pretty thorough, um, and seeing things standing beside a racetrack for 10 years with Luke and AJ racing snowcross, any time a chain ever broke, it always piled in the bottom of the case and jammed the drive axle, dr the, the sprocket on the drive axle anyway, so you're into a wild skid and a slide to a stop. So what I'm saying is, is that the chances of breaking a chain uh, on this Polaris are slim to none, but if you did, the chain's got to go somewhere and it ends up piling up in the bottom of the case and blows the case into a million pieces too. So I know that's kind of a goofy argument, but I don't see it being a, uh, a especially effective safety feature to have the brake on the axle. I think the brake on the jack shaft is the way to go. It still is probably requires a few more parts, but it's still, it works. The reward is you get really deep modulation, great two-fingered or one-fingered brake control. Okay, so we've been kind of standing back from uh, some of the mechanical stuff, but I think I kind of like it here. We're doing the ethereal stuff, the warm and fuzzy stuff. So we'll talk about the hood panels. One thing Polaris has done super cool, super right since the beginning of the Axis actually even in the pro rides is they've made it so you can get under the hood of their sleds today's modern sleds are a hassle to get at the engine except for the polaris matrix this these two side panels come off i'm not going to do it because it's kind of a waste of time but they come off in literally five seconds they go back on in about 10 seconds each and this middle panel with the gauge cluster and all of the the uh, headlight and and windshield and all that it comes off in about 10 seconds on its own. The cool part is, because this middle panel is so easy to remove, you can get at stuff like spark plugs, or you can get it, you can get it a myriad of stuff. And uh, it's, it's a great idea because, and I'm not bad-mouthing anybody else's product, but the competition, without exception, does not allow you to remove the middle section in any kind of hurry at all. It takes tools and it's a, an arduous, annoying job. Polaris has got this right. Okay, the fasteners that hold the hood and the side panels on, the side panels on are proprietary. 
their Polaris's own, and uh, that's kind of common in the industry. Everybody's got their own kind of little fastener. They don't use uh, what was called a Dezus, D-Z-U-S, weird spelling. A Dezus fastener, they don't use that anymore. They're from the motorcycle world. Okay, so this has got, uh, came with this nice mid-height windshield. It's very effective and it looks nice, doesn't spoil the looks of the sled. Six uh, projector beam elements in this headlight and it is scary. I mean, you could light up a football field and, and uh, play a game with, with uh, two of those headlights, one at each end of the, of the uh, stadium. It's a very bright headlight system. Um, the storage that's available on the Matrix is second to none. And I've got, to, I'm supposed to know how to do this like at the drop of a hat. Okay, so it's hard to see in there but you could put two mating pairs of chipmunks in there and they would be happy for the rest of the winter. It's, it's really big. It's, uh, it's a very unusually large storage uh, capacity uh, on a modern snowmobile because for some reason or another, we've gotten away from giving uh, people good storage. This is great. You can fit anything you want in there, including your dinner. Okay, that's one area. You'd think that'd be enough. The seat comes off with another one of those proprietary fasteners under here. Boom, pops off. There's another nice size storage area. You can put a belt in, put some tools, whatever you want. This up here, by the way, gets warm. And if you're worried about goggles and that kind of thing, you can just stuff them in there behind the 7S. They heat up and, uh, and dry out. So that's, that's a really cool deal. Um, aluminum handlebars. All new switch gear, obviously, for the Matrix last year. New hydraulic master cylinder last year. Um, yeah, so that's uh, ergonomically speaking, other than talking about the 7S. So let's just go through it quickly. Um, the 7S is the state of the art in the industry for a digital display. It's seven inches, obviously, that's why it's called the 7S. But man, does it do a lot of stuff. So you've got group ride. When you're with Polaris guys, you can watch your buddies on the, the GPS. It is not uh, cellular uh, limited. It doesn't have, you don't have to be on a cell tower to make it work. You don't have to put your phone in here. This thing is 100% ready to rock the way it sits right here as you're looking at it. Um, you set your uh, uh, handlebar and thumb heaters on the 7S. You can select and configure uh, how you want it to look. And I'm gonna start it in a second and show you the, the one configuration that we've got in it right now. So you can configure the tack and the speedo. Um, one thing I really like is you can always have, you never have to give up having temperature. I like temperature because, you know, you get one of those days when it's, it's been mild for a day and then it freezes hard and you're concerned about overheating and not getting enough lube on the rails. So it's nice to be able to watch temperature. Fuel gauge is in percentage. It's accurate, like surprisingly accurate. So the 7S, uh, and then of course, just the GPS features of it. It has access to a lot of trail data uh, across North America. And it's, it is just, it is so easy to use. Oh yeah, you can toggle it from here. You can toggle it from these switches and you can touch screen it as well. A lot of people don't realize that, but it, it is a touch screen as well. So there's three ways to activate it and to toggle it and switch it. So let's start it up. Oh look, there's me. Yeah, that's a cool uh, entry. It does that every time you turn it on. Okay, here we are, ride command. Okay, and there's our configuration. So you can see what we've got. Engine temp, engine hours, trip one and trip two, and fuel. And then the tack is on the outside of this circle and the mile per hour is on the inside. And uh, we've got it in uh, American measurements because most of us were born before 1977 when Canada went to metric, so we like it. In, uh, our American friends calibration. And up at the top, you've got a quick look at the fuel up here, 95%. And uh, it's, just, it, it's just so vivid and so easy to watch in the corner of your eye when you're running down a lake at 100 miles an hour. Honestly, you can just glance and you can see the information that you need. It's, it's really well done. Okay, so this is the Clean Fire 850 Liberty. So it looks like about 3,800 to four grand is engagement. 
Are you happy? I started it. You didn't even have to bug me about it. Appreciate that. Okay. Um, let's go into a little more of the tech side of it. It runs, of course, a Polaris uh, P95 primary, which is a, a torque tower, uh, three tower uh, flyweight clutch, which has been one of the standards in the industry. It's a great clutch. It's durable, long lasting, uh, easy to service uh, when it gets miles on it. And it has a team secondary. Uh, which is what Polaris has been combining their clutch with for a number of years now, going back pretty much uh, uh, almost this whole decade. So uh, that's your clutching deal. This is uh, an all-new motor. It is not like the Liberty motor. It's, it's completely new, and it's a family engine. The 650 Patriot and the 850 are in a family, have the same cases, same castings, of course, just uh, smaller pistons and uh, some other detail refinements. This has three-stage... Uh, electric shifted exhaust valves, very effective exhaust valve control, and uh, not prone to sticking and getting gummed up. It works, it works really effectively. Um, okay, so that's under the hood, and uh, that's pretty much all I'm gonna take you there under the hood. This is electric start, and all of our press units we order with electric start, so for sake of comparison. By the way, this, this is a pretty light snowmobile. If you look at Polaris's claim, but moreover, if you ride it, uh, you'll know this is, a, this is a light snowmobile. Polaris claims a dry weight of around 460 some odd pounds. But, um, you know, I, I can't verify that that's true because we haven't weighed it. But it does feel very light. Um, okay, so let's talk about suspension because that's really where literally the rubber hits the road. This uh, VR1 comes with Walker Evans Velocity compression adjustable shocks on the front. Um, these are quality dampers, they're high performance dampers, and they, they really work great. And the, the uh, clickers are easy to calibrate and move together in unison. There's about 20 clicks on each side. And uh, yeah, that's nice quality stuff. Um, this is Polaris's race IFS, they call it. And uh, it, is, uh, it produces, let's just say this, it produces the best handling sensations in the business. And as of yet, we're waiting for somebody to come up and equal the, the kind of predictable turn in, the linear way this thing bites through the center of a corner and the way that it doesn't shake its head and uh, the skis work well in concert with this front end as well. It's, it's a really great front suspension and it defines Polaris snowmobiles. It defines it defined the Pro Ride, it defined the Axis, and it most certainly defines the Matrix in terms of handling. If you're you consider yourself to be a corner carver, then and you haven't ridden one of these, then you haven't done it all yet. So that's uh, that's uh, what you've got up front. Great working front end. In the rear, we have Polaris's new two years old, Pro CC, which stands for Conventional Coupled. And I just want to explain this to you a little bit because it's important. This is a long torque arm design, front torque arm. The torque arm is the front arm that hooks between the rail right here and the tunnel right there. Now you can see that is a sizable diff distance. That is a long front torque arm. Skidoo started this, it's a black art. It's hard to explain. It's hard to even get an engineer to explain why it works the way it does. But long front torque arms are definitely the future. Now, with a long front torque arm, you, you, the Polaris now runs a uh, coupled, double coupled rear arm. So the coupling takes place against this scissor stop and that uh, aluminum, anodized aluminum bar there. It bangs into it that way when uh, when the front arm goes up and it bangs into it at the back here when the rear arm goes down, okay? It couples, and so does the skidoo, it couples what we call late. What that means is, is there's, a, there's a lot of uncoupled movement in this skid. The, the, the front arm and the rear arm are moving a lot before this couples up. And what that does is it gives you that plush feel and whoops, uh, it may, maybe less than whoops, chatter, and uh, small, small bumps, small edges, those kind of things. This, um, this setup is late coupling like the Skidoo R motion is. In fact, this is a lot of similar kind of uh, architecture as the, uh, as the R motion, and why wouldn't it? Because the R motion, when it came out in 2011, was, uh, you know, it set a new standard. So this is 
this definitely delivers the the best ride of any Polaris snowmobile suspension that they have built to date. This Pro CC, it is a it is a home run. Um, so I wanted you to see that, and this has got a nice ripper on it, which is great. Polaris is now providing that as a as a factory option. Oh, one thing I wanted to say to you too is the way this thing is styled and and colorated. I mean, it's a pretty doggone nice looking sled. The colors, the white rails, the spindles, the the bodywork, the uh, the the flat paint as well. Um, Polaris claims that there is now potentially over 1 million combinations you can get when you snow check and uh, snow check select and order the sled the way you want it. So you can literally, the, the odds of you literally having one of a kind Polaris snowmobile are extremely possible, a highly likely in fact that you can order up one that nobody else has. Think about the complexity of that in the manufacturing end of things. It must be a nightmare, but it's kind of cool because uh, you can order the, the, so many things differently in terms of the aesthetics. You can order uh, so many things differently that, uh, and in combination with each other that uh, you end up with a truly unique snowmobile of your own making. Uh, that was just an anecdotal comment. Okay, so we've done the suspension. We've done the track, and uh, the skis are Polaris's latest design, and they're good. They, they are not prone to darting. Um, they are effective, but most importantly, they work great with, uh, with this Polaris Racing IFS. So uh, I think that about covers this from a, a quick look, and I think I've given you as much information as I can possibly expound from my... Uh, from my uh, memory all at once. But uh, in any case, if you like this walk around, up on the screen, there's like the like button and the subscribe. Would you please push those for me because I'm such a nice guy and I do a great job doing this for you and I look forward to being able to do it. Thanks a lot. It's great to, uh, to be able to talk to you again today.